worthy to be praised. Uh, as we were singing, I was thinking, just thinking about the lyrics that we were singing. You know, sometimes we get so caught up in the beat and the movement that we don't think about what it is that we're saying. And as we were singing, Jesus, worthy, blessed Savior, worthy to be praised, I, I just thought about all the different ways that Jesus has stood in and interceded for me. And then when we got to the part where it says, God is our rock. I thought about all the ways that God has been a rock in my life. And I thought about even this week as Hurricane Dahlia was making its way from the Gulf over Florida. And I was up that night watching the Weather Channel thinking about that. And I was thinking about how they were saying that there was a perfect alignment between the earth and the moon and the sun and how the tides would even be higher because of that. And I'm worrying about our sisters and brothers who are in Florida and something said, why are you fretting and worrying? It's good to be concerned, but you need to be reminded of who God is. And that the God that flung the planets in the galaxy, the God that can make it so that the sun and the earth and the moon can perfectly align. The God who raises up the winds in the east and then shuts them down in the west. The God that even brought the sun up this morning for us to see another day. As I thought about that, I said, you might as well go ahead and go to sleep because we serve a God who does not slumber, does not sleep. A God who is always concerned. A God who is always invested. A God who will look after us the way God looks after the cosmos. So as we prepare our hearts this morning to go into this time of intercessory prayer, if you just imagine that you think from the going, rising of the sun to the going down of the same, God is worthy to be praised and the God who is worthy to be praised is the God who is standing right there with you, holding you, keeping you. That God is the one that we incline ourselves to even on this morning. Let's go to God in prayer. this morning, hey, just to say you're worthy to be praised. 
God, we recognize that even as we are gathered this morning in your house, ah, uh, we're just grateful for the opportunity to be here to bless your name. Oh God, and we're going to give your name the glory and honor that it's due because there's nobody like you, God. There's nobody like you, God. Just this week, God, you've delivered mamas and babies out of ICU, and we bless your name. Just this week, God, you've uh, raised somebody off the sick bed, God, and we bless your name for it. Just this week, God, you've made ways out of no way. You've put food on tables. Uh, you've cooled fevers, God, and we bless your name. Just this week, God, you saved those from the hurricanes, Gail, God, and we bless your name. Just this week, God, you cooled us down from 105 to 95, and it's still hot, but God, we bless your name. This week, God, you've shown us that you are God and you are in control. So we bless your name. Oh, God, realizing who you are, who you've been to us this morning. Oh, God, we thank you for the ways that you are, yet hold us to you. The ways that you yet forgive us and forgive us of our sins. Ah, the ways that you continue to scoop us up. So, God, we thank you for forgiving us, God, and we thank you for the opportunity to then forgive others because that means, God, Ah, that you continue the cycle of forgiveness in our lives, and we thank you. Now, God, we come this morning already in the spirit of praise and worship. God, we've lifted your name up. Ah, we've shined on you, God, ah, just to tell you back to yourself who you are. Ah, because, God, we understand that when we uh, praise you, God, when we worship you for who you are, God, that activates you on our behalf. Ah, God, when we uh, lift up your name, God, that causes us, as Grandmama used to say, to stoop a little closer to hear what it is we have to say. So, God, we come this morning standing in the need of prayer. Oh, God, we come this morning without form or fashion knowing that you are the only one that can do something about our situation. So, God, we come this morning asking you, oh, God, just a touch. God, we don't have to ask you to show up because we already feel your spirit moving in this place. Yes, in fact, your spirit is moving everywhere. Yes. In places that we can see and the places that we can't see. God, your spirit is moving in the light and even in the dark to make yourself known. So God, as your spirit invades this place and it's pervasive, pervasive in every place, God, we would just ask that you would stand in the gap. Because, God, we need you to stand in the gap. Maybe some folks don't have any problems. Maybe some folks have always had good health. Ah, maybe some folks have always had children that behave. But, God, some of us have had to stand in the space ah, where we needed someone to step in for us. Some of us way over in the midnight hour have been calling your name, God, and it seems like relief is not coming. God, someone this week had to stand on a job where those who were in leadership over them did not appreciate them. God did not respect them. But yet, God, they have to pay their bills. So they had to go into that workplace. But God, we ask right now, hey, that when they go back, that something will be different. That something will have changed because they called upon the name of the Lord and God, you heard their prayer. You heard their plea, oh God. And you did something about their situation. Oh God, we're believing and trusting you to be a, a God of your word. A God who will never leave us, never forsake us. A God who always has our back. So God, we come right now calling out your name, saying, ah, oh God, who's been our refuge. God, who's been our strength. God, who's been our water. God, who's been our manna from on high. God, we need you to do it again. We need you to 
deliver again. We need you to set free again. We need you to open doors again. We need you to lift us up again. God, we need you to help us to hold our chins up again. Oh God, and we ask, oh God, that as you're doing your work, that we'll do our work. God, we ask that we'll uh, stay on our knees. God, we ask that we'll continue to bow down before you in prayer and supplication, telling you what we need. But God, we ask that we won't just tell you what we need. God, we thank you for what you've already done. So God, we thank you ah, for the ways that you've already moving in city halls, councils. God, we thank you for the ways that you're already moving in the midst of school boards that are more concerned about power and prestige than the children who need to be educated. So God, we ask that you will continue to move in the houses of Congress, oh God, as they legislate. And God, we ask that like a mighty Russian wind come through, God, even in state legislatures, God, that you would remind them ah, that they're called to a higher purpose beyond political partnership. God, they're called to do those things that would help everybody, not just the rich and the elite and the well-connected, God, but those things that would help the least and the lowly and the left out and the imprisoned and the hungry and the homeless and those whose backs are against the wall. And when they find themselves doing things that doesn't help everybody, God, we ask that your spirit will move in them. Ah, that they will find themselves saying, ah, I've been wrong. God, because we trust in you, oh God, because you are a God of justice. You are a God of mercy. You are a God of long suffering. So God, we trust in you. Hey, that you'll make justice roll like waters down the streets. Hey God, until every person in this country, on this continent and in this world, will have a place to lay their head. Will have a place where they can be free. Oh God, we thank you in advance for what you're doing. Now, oh God, we come this morning lifting up Shiloh, Shiloh Missionary Baptist Church. Lifting up Shiloh, literally the name that means peace, the shalom, the goodness that you intended uh, in the beginning. God, we come lifting up Shiloh, asking that you would strengthen her. Give her the determination to keep on keeping on. And God, we ask this morning, as we go up a little higher in this service, God, we ask that you would bless the one that will break the bread of life. Bless our pastor, God. Give him everything he needs as he seeks your face in prayer, as he seeks your face in study, as he seeks your face, as he seeks to administer. What thus says the Lord, let us be hearers and doers of this work. Because God, we know there's a world out there that needs us to show them your love. A world out there right outside these doors that needs you, uh, needs us to show them your peace. There's a world out there, oh God, that needs to show people that there is another way. There is an alternative economy to the capitalism that seeks to take the little people out and leave the folks at the top intact. God, there is an alternative to violence in the streets. There is an alternative ah, to some folks having a lot and some folks having nothing. And God, you've already shown us what the alternative is. You've already shown us your alternative kingdom of God. Ah, when Jesus came to this earth, yeah, when Jesus was born of Mary, when Jesus walked this earth, doing your will. So God, now that you've shown us your face through Jesus, help us to show the world your face through the Jesus in us. We hear your spirit. Help us to be the only Bible that somebody might read. 
Help us to be the only Jesus that someone might see. Not for our sake, but for your name, for your glory. Hey, because thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever and ever. Amen. So God, we bless your name. And God, we ask this prayer in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And everybody said amen. Amen. amen.